Hello students, this video is your introduction to the basics of lesson planning. So I'm going to share my screen and go over a few things with you today in this video. And this is just an introduction, but it should be enough to give you a grasp of those beginning steps that you'll need to take before you begin planning lessons. All right, so we're going to start with the basics. What do I start with? Okay, where do I start? And I first usually begin with my topic, right? If I know I'm gonna teach a lesson, what am I gonna teach about? So you have to start from your standard. And um, contrary to what I thought as a new teacher, I thought I could just kind of look at the standards and pick the ones I wanted to teach when I wanted to teach them. That's not really how it goes. You do have to follow a scope and sequence or it might be called a pacing guide. It might also be called a curriculum map. This is basically a plan set out on somewhat of a calendar uh, for you by your school district or your school. And this tells you how long you're supposed to spend on each topic and each set of standards. It'll tell you how deep you should go on each, each one. And so that's a very helpful tool once you learn how to use it. And uh, it's often also embedded with benchmarks. And so these are sort of assessments that you're going to be giving throughout your school year uh, to check and see what the growth is of your students. And so often when you're a new teacher, you'll be given this pacing guide or curriculum map, and they'll tell you the benchmarks at this date, and you'll have to follow that curriculum map to make sure that you teach those standards uh, before the benchmark. Otherwise, your students will be taking an assessment on something they haven't learned. So you want to be careful of that. You're also going to want to try to do a pre-assessment on the standards you're going to teach if possible. Many districts embed this. It's already uh, part of your schedule. So you might begin the school year with a big pre-assessment. And so if that's the case, then you probably already have access to that data to show whether or not your students are familiar with the standard and how well they grasp it already, okay? So in order to understand this lesson planning process and all these beginning steps that go before the lesson planning, I want to use an analogy. So let's say we're going to take a short road trip. We're going to go somewhere we haven't been before. Now, this is a very short trip here, obviously. So I mapped out how we would get from our university, parking lot seven, where many of us might park, um, to let's say Gardena Elementary School. You've got to go do some field work. You've never been there before, okay? So many of us will pull out our phone and just uh, use our GPS app. So let's think about that process that takes place. We know we have to get somewhere and we're gonna put our destination into the app. I don't take out a map and start where I'm at and look at each turn and plan it out, right? I actually put in my destination and it maps it out backwards for me and suggests a route that it believes is probably the fastest and most efficient way to get to my destination. All right, so that is essentially an analogy for what we're doing when we lesson plan. You'll notice also, I went ahead and added a destination. I thought, well, you know what, what's along the way? I put in a Starbucks uh, and I just searched that and I might wanna stop and get some coffee on my way. So once I put all that in, it plans it out for me and gives me a detailed set of directions over here. You've all been doing this for some time, I'm sure. And so this is an analogy for lesson planning. Okay, so if we think about that process that we put in to our phone to get to this new place we've never been before, um, this is essentially what your curriculum map will do for you and what that beginning stages of the lesson planning process is like for you as a teacher. So time is always important. Your curriculum map will tell you, you need to spend one week or three weeks or two days or whatever it is on this standard uh, because this is how important it is. They put a weight to it based on how much uh, time they think it's going to take. And this is the same thing this app does for you when you're planning your drive over to this school, right? And so it tells me it's only going to take me 13 minutes to get there, 3.6 miles. That's essentially the same thing that happens when you look at your curriculum map and it says spend three weeks on this unit, right? I also have to start with my destination, right? I cannot just map out where I'm going if I don't know where I'm headed. So that is essentially what your standards give you. They tell you what you need to accomplish. And so I must write an objective from those standards. That objective is like your destination. Where do you want to be by the time you're done with this unit? What do you want students to know? So that's kind of an analogy for putting in the address of where you're headed in your app. Notice also, I mentioned earlier that doing a pre-assessment is a positive thing. 
So if I have been to this place before and I've been there a few times, I might have learned some tricks along the way that will help me get there. And maybe after a while, I won't need all these long directions. Um, I might also know, hey, you know what? This light over here takes a really long time. So instead of waiting there, I'm gonna get on the freeway here and then hop back off the freeway. I might know these little tricks because I've done it before or because I just know the area really well. That's what a pre-assessment does for you. It tells you what your students already know and it prevents you from wasting time on things you don't need to waste time on because they already understand it. Your choice in how you get there is up to you. That is your teaching style, right? So if I start here and I know I'm gonna make these turns and take this route, I can take that route. But notice there's a lot of other ways I could have gone. I could have taken this route and got on the freeway the whole way. I could have done, gone down to this street and gone back up. Um, there's a lot of different routes and as long as I get to my destination on time, it doesn't really matter. And that's kind of how lesson planning goes and teaching goes. As long as you get to that destination, which means your students have learned the objective that you set out to teach them, it doesn't matter what strategies you picked. It doesn't matter how you taught the lessons. You pick what works for you as a teacher with your personality, with your students and what they're comfortable with, uh, what you think they're going to respond to. And that's essentially you picking the route along the way. Notice there's also room for me to add things in, right? I added this Starbucks to my route. You can also add things into your lesson plan and you should. You should have choices. You should have differentiation. You should have, well, if this happens, I might do it this way. I might plan something different for this group. Um, you're gonna wanna have those options kind of pre-planned out. And notice this is kind of the ultimate goal, having this whole big plan, but along the way, I also have these detailed lessons. Um, it's kind of like when the app gives you these exact directions telling you how long to drive before you turn right or left and when to stop, when to go. Um, that is your detailed daily lesson plan, okay? So I hope that analogy helped you think through what this process is like. And in fact, uh, a lot of new teachers like to jump right to the lesson plan, um, but, in, but you need to back up and look at the standards and spend a lot of time on those standards and writing your objectives. So that's what we're gonna do first here. So understanding the standards is really important. Within each standard, there are concepts and there are skills. They're embedded in that long wordy standard that you're looking at, which you're going to teach, okay? So concepts have to do with what students need to learn. Skills are what they need to be able to do. And they're both important. Um, oftentimes skills are more important than concepts because a lot of us forget things that we've learned in school, but we didn't forget the skills with which we used to get those concepts in our head in the first place, right? Um, so you want to think about both and how you're going to embed both into your teaching. So the way to do that is start with the standard itself and unpack it. Now this has uh, become somewhat of a I guess controversial, maybe that's a little heavy of a word, but I think some teachers think that unpacking the standards is a little controversial because it makes it a little too formulaic. Um, so I'm gonna argue that we do both. We unpack it, but we also wanna look at the standard holistically, right? So we're gonna start by unpacking it first. So we have these concepts and we have skills. I've taken a standard from sixth grade uh, language arts and I've identified what I believe are the concepts and I've highlighted them in green. And then I've highlighted the skills in yellow. If you need to, you can go ahead and pause it and take a look at these and think about it for a moment. Okay, so you have your standard here, trace and evaluate the argument and specific claims in a text, distinguishing claims that are supported by reasons and evidence from claims that are not. That is a lot to ask of a sixth grader, right? So there's a lot in there and this might take me more than one day, this might be a multiple day uh, set of lessons in my unit, but I'm just gonna think about what's in this standard for now. I wanna reflect on this standard as well. Once I've identified those concepts and skills, I wanna reflect on it. And I wanna think of what the spirit of the standard is, right? So what is the overall ideal goal when I say my students are leaving my sixth grade class and I have taught this, what are they now able to do as growing human beings? What skill have I given them that's valuable? What concepts do they know that are valuable? Why is it important? So you wanna think about this uh, before you actually start planning because you're gonna to wanna to be really intentional with that and not drift too off into the formulaic methods of, of breaking apart the standards. So we have to do both, right? We have our skills and our concepts and we wanna keep in mind what is the overall goal and why is it important? 
All right, so now we wanna think about outcomes. If I've got my standard identified, I know what the skills are, I know what the concepts are, I know, I know what they need to accomplish then, right? So I, I think I would suggest taking this and highlighting those words, whatever standard you're using, find those keywords that identify those skills and concepts, and then kind of rewrite it in your own words. Put it in your own words now, what that standard's about. And that'll help you kind of own it in that process of planning your lesson. So think about what tasks are implied by this standard. Is there some kind of a task that I think is pretty obvious that they want me to do with this? What kind of activity might accomplish this? So I have an idea up here that I've put for this particular one that it seems to imply that I should use a text that makes an argument because students have to distinguish claims um, in a text and they have to figure out the ones that are supported by reasons and evidence and the ones that are not. Um, so it also kind of implies that they'll have to make a decision about whether or not the claims are supported by evidence. So um, how could I do that? Start thinking about that. How could I get them to do something like that? Um, and there's a lot of different ways, right? Remember our, our route from one place to our destination, uh, one place to another, that point A to point B, there's a lot of routes I can take, right? It doesn't have to be done one way, but think of a way that you are comfortable that would make sense to your students. Then you're going to write an objective this is your, your outcome. This is what you believe students should be able to do by the time you're done with this lesson. And um, you wanna think about this uh, intentionally and write it in a student-friendly way if possible. And then uh, some teachers actually have two versions, right? Their own and the student version. I like to try and write my original with something that kids can understand, uh, but that's up to you. I suggest you try to use some of the same wording from the standard. So here's an example of an objective that I wrote for this standard. Students will evaluate the strength of claims by reading multiple persuasive texts and creating a chart with evidence. So all objectives have three parts. You should have the level of cognition. And if you don't know what that is, you can look that up. I'll provide you some resources if necessary. And uh, identified that here as evaluate. The level of cognition needs to be there. The content, what exactly is it that they have to learn, right? And then, how are we going to do it? Our, I can't just stop there and say they're going to evaluate the strengths of claims by reading texts. Um, how do I know they got it, right? I need to have some kind of tangible uh, thing we do that, that tells me they got it. So usually that's followed by some kind of an activity. All right. Once you've got your objective, now you're ready to start planning a lesson. Um, I'm not going to go through the details of each type of lesson model. There are popular models out there. These five are five that I suggest you look into. And if you have this presentation in front of you right now, um, you can go and click this button and you can open up the presentation that goes into a description of each of these five models. So direct instruction is very popular. I would say it's the easiest to plan, not necessarily the easiest to teach, but the easiest to plan. Um, cooperative learning, is a, a nice group kind of work thing. It's got like all kids involved and they have to do their part, right? We all are pretty familiar with that. Some teachers actually do kind of a mix of direct instruction and cooperative learning and you can do that. You may also try something like a concept attainment and I can help you with that one if you're not familiar, but it's essentially going backwards from a deductive perspective instead of inductive. Inquiry is the student driven kind of lesson where students are proposing questions and they're researching, they're finding out things and they're experimenting. Uh, it is harder to plan, but I'd say easier to teach uh, because it's student driven. So uh, you have to plan a lot in the head in the beginning, but once it gets going, it's kind of on them and you just facilitate, right? The 5E lesson is sort of um, similar to an inquiry, but it kind of takes uh, elements of all these others and, and puts them in, into one kind of structure. And it's common in science, but you can use it in any subject area. So if you're interested in these, I would suggest you start by downloading this. Click here and download it. And you can look over my descriptions of these. And the description tells you a little bit about it, a little bit about the teacher role, a little bit about the student role. It doesn't provide much more than that because you should go on your own and do a little more research. I suggest if you think you have one you're interested in, you go and Google it, look at some videos of teachers teaching that kind of lesson, find some example lessons and see if that's what you're really after. All right, whatever 
type of model you select, it doesn't matter. They're all good. They all work. Whatever you select, um, you might be using a template, particularly if you're in a credential program or if you are in a district that has a template that they prefer people use, you might have to use one. Now, a lot of times new teachers ask me, do I really have to use these really detailed lessons in the future? Because sometimes when I go observe teachers, I see them doing something like this down here in the corner that just has like, a, it looks more like a calendar with a to-do list. Um, and I would remind you of our analogy, right? So think about this. If I have been to this destination many times, I probably don't put it in my GPS anymore, right? <laughs> I don't need my phone to tell me when to turn if I've been there 500 times. So those teachers that you're watching um, that have those lesson plans that look more like a little to-do list instead of an actual detailed lesson like you're working on in your credential program, um, they've done it a bunch of times and that's why they can do it that way because in their mind, they've already got those steps laid out. Um, you'll get there. But in the beginning, I would suggest it does not hurt to overplan. I've known many teachers that overplan even when they're very experienced, and that's okay. No matter what type you pick, you will have all these elements in your lesson. You must have a standard and an objective, and the objective needs to be based on that standard, as I showed you. Unpack that standard and think about what the, the meaning behind it is. It should have detailed steps for your learning activities. You must have differentiated instruction of some sort. Right? You need to think about how you're going to help struggling students, how you're going to help advanced students. How are you going to help the kid that doesn't quite fit your plan exactly the way you laid it out? Uh, and that is essential. If you are doing your Cal TPAs, it will be expected that you have some kind of differentiation in there for different kinds of student needs. You must also have formative assessments. Uh, that means you must check for understanding multiple times throughout your lesson, not just once at the end, multiple times. Check regularly, check all the time. Uh, what little things can you do to see if they're getting it along the way? That is the biggest key that new teachers uh, miss uh, that makes the, the new teaching experience kind of tough is you teach your heart out and then two or three days later, you figure out they didn't get it. Um, so you wanna embed that in your lesson from the get-go. You also need to have a closure kind of an activity. Students need an opportunity to reflect and to organize their thoughts at the end. And if you're struggling with timing, this can be tough, but try to think of something so that you can pause whatever you're doing when it gets close to the end uh, and switch to that closure activity so kids can start that reflection process. It helps them wrap up their learning into a nice neat little package with a bow so that they can categorize it in their mind and retrieve it later. So make sure you plan that in. The next thing is to gather your materials. I know this seems really obvious, um, but a lot of times new teachers uh, tend to get ideas for lessons. And then uh, I know a couple times when I was a new teacher, I would get there thinking I'd be able to find some some resources really easily in the storage room and then I couldn't get to them in time and I didn't have what I needed or you expect students to have certain supplies and then they don't. Um, so I would suggest to avoid yourself from always running to the store and going to Target the night before and spending your own money on all kinds of things. Try to think about how you can accomplish this lesson and this activity with as little as possible. What are the some basic things that you know you're gonna have access to that you can use? Doesn't mean you can never pull in those other resources, but try to keep it um, where you're not constantly running around trying to find new stuff. Um, you'll get really creative after a while on how to use just plain printer paper <laughs> and plain Crayola markers and just use uh, regular stuff that you always have in your classroom. And so with my example from earlier, that objective that I wrote for the standard, I thought, well, my students will compare two texts and analyze the argument and then chart it in a small group by identifying evidence, right? And so what kind of supplies might I need? I need to have this stuff planned out ahead of time. I need to make sure I have copies for everyone. I wanna have chart paper for each group. I wanna have highlighters so they can highlight that evidence. I wanna have some markers so they have uh, access to writing their ideas down. That's simple, but it is important to plan this ahead of time and organize your classroom so that it's ready to go. I've seen great lessons go awry because the, the supplies were not prepared and not organized and laid out. When you prepare to teach, here's some tips for you. I'm not gonna read them all to you, but I want you to look at these questions. Maybe you'll pause it and think about each one. Maybe take a screenshot for yourself. Um, reflect and think about all these things before you go to teach. It doesn't hurt to practice. It doesn't hurt to take time to anticipate problems and things like that. It will help you uh, be more prepared. And that is the key to being a successful new teacher. 
here's a wonderful John Dewey quote for you uh, to, to get you going and get you thinking about what you're about to embark on. And I hope this was helpful to you. Have a wonderful time planning your lessons in the future.